All right, welcome back to Sand Shark Customs, where if I can do it, you can do it. Well, it's, uh, let's see, it's the day before Christmas right now, and we got our whole house cleaned up because we got family coming over. And yesterday it was a relatively nice day. Today, well, we got some snow, and it's currently still snowing. So unlike others that get to do a Jeep swap in the warmth of either California or Florida or somewhere where it's warm, I am in my garage freezing my butt off, but that's okay. Um, I do have a torpedo heater right there that unfortunately when I'm filming, I can't have running because it's way too loud. So as of right now, we're up to, I don't know, 39 subscribers which is super cool. Every day we seem to be getting, you know, one or zero, you know, every day. So everything is going well on that front. So I encourage you to subscribe. Helps me understand that people are watching and helps me grow the channel. Yesterday I worked on removing the fuse box and battery box out of here. Give me some space to work with. We had to remove the stuff up there we had to remove the grill even though i realized i did the grill out of order actually let's let's talk about that order so we have this oh let's see if i get the shadow out of there so this is from jeep speed shop and this is just their uh diy hemi swap guide and it's specifically for the 07 to 2011 jk's uh, obvious, I'll put this link in the, the description there. I also noticed their website's not very tablet friendly. I can help out with that, Todd, if you uh, are watching. Nonetheless, let's look at what we did. We did step one, we removed the AC. Step two, we um, disconnected the fuel system and took the pressure away. Then we disconnected the battery, actually removed it completely. Then we remove the air intake and air filter housing. That is gone. Then we remove the battery box and disconnected the plugs going to the grill. So step six in this process, take off the underbody splash shield and drain the coolant. All right, we can definitely do that. Uh, remove the grill and unplug the marker lights. I pretty much already did that, except I didn't unplug the marker lights yet, so we'll get that one tackled. Disconnect the oil cooler lines. All right. Remove the heater, coolant reservoir hose, as well as the upper and lower radiator hoses. Awesome. I think we can do that. My kids are enjoying some sledding in my front yard right now. Give a thumbs up. Awesome. Dad. What's up? I kind of want to stand the sled with me. You both have your own sled. I want the other sled and we're going to get the other Okay, go out there and tell her I said to share, okay? Alright. So let's look at what we need to do first. Take off the underbody splash shield and drain the coolant. So let's look at what we're going to be working with here. Radiator, splash shield is right here. Looks like it's held on by a couple little plastic rivets. We'll get that taken off and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I do want to talk about a tool. Um, I bought this off of Amazon. It's just a, I don't even know what to call it. It's just a, one of those plastic rivet plug removers, I guess you could say. And here's an example right here. You kind of just, well, I could actually slide it under here if I wanted to, and then pull up. Let's go under here. And you can see how it gets under there. Granted, this one really wants to come out. And voila. Okay, so once you get the two clips off, or two uh, little plastic push rivets, this thing pulls out pretty easily. But I did notice somewhere 
right up in here we are getting hung up on. Looks like. Ah, there it is. Another push rivet right there. So that was removing the underbody splash shield, and now we're going to figure out how to drain the coolant. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Looking down here at the, the radiator, you'll notice right here, there's a little outlet, and then embedding, when we turn this, it will drain out the outlet. So, I am going to find something. I'm going to guess that there's nothing directly underneath here. Like if I back up, there's nothing directly underneath here. So, I might just put a bucket underneath or maybe just hold up a gallon jug to catch the uh, radiator fluid with. I think that's what my goal will be. We'll just use a gallon jug and see how it goes. Okay, I have something interesting happening when I uh, wanted to drain the antifreeze. What's going on is I thought that this little spigot that's coming out right here, when I, when I turned this knob, I thought it would have drained out right there. But apparently I'm a little wrong there because when I turn the knob, it just drains out of, you know, where, where the knob is unthreading from. So I may be doing that piece wrong, but nonetheless, I got it started. I have a gallon jug under here. My understanding is that there's going to be roughly a gallon and a half of antifreeze that should drain out somewhere right around, right around there. So I will get that evaluated and let you know. Be back in just a second. I was able to get the, the plug out, which is just right here. I still don't know why it wasn't coming out of the, uh, the little spigot that's right there. That's a little strange to me, but nonetheless, it is drained out. I'd say I did pretty good. I didn't get very much on the floor. The part that I'm very confused about, it was my impression that I would get about a gallon and a half of antifreeze out of here, and I don't even think I'll fill up a gallon. Hmm. We'll have to figure out what's going on with that. Oh, well, honestly, I don't really care because we're swapping out the engine and everything anyways, but let's count that step done. Let it drip for a little bit longer. So we took off the underbody splash and we drained the coolant. All right, now we remove the grill, unplug the marker lights. Done. Disconnect the oil cooler lines. All right, let's get to that. Next part is to disconnect the oil cooler lines. right here on the right hand side of the uh, the radiator we'll go ahead and do that you can't really hold the camera and do that at the same time so i'm gonna go ahead and do it and then i'll be right back next step after getting the oil cooler lines off is to remove the upper and lower where's that at the lower um, uh, radiator lines here and then we also need to disconnect the heater lines I may not sound confident because I'm not 100% sure that that's the correct name of them, but we'll continue. All right, you can see. 
see those are disconnected and loose right at the moment. Once I pull this out, it'll be, I'll be able to cover up these ends. I don't want anything getting in them. All right, so upper and lower heater lines are out. They're also AC lines, so I'm not 100% sure how that system works, but they run up here somehow. All right, let's go see what the next step is. All right, so coolant reservoir hose. Oh, I gotta do that one. Okay, so the coolant reservoir is right here. Now this is the hose. It looks like it's just held on with the little uh, squeeze clamps. So, and then on this side, it just looks like this. Oh, that was easy enough. That was done, done, done. Okay. Back to our list. All right, so disconnect the following electrical connections. Alternator, throttle body, knock center, knock sensor, TP sensor, IAC, O2, CMP, purge solenoid, map, and engine wire harness. Woo! They just had a lot of words. I don't know what they are. Granted, I know what a few of them are. I am going to... Yeah, I'm going to end this video and then I'm going to go do some research on what, I know a few of them, but I'm going to go do some research on what all those different sensors are. Don't want to make a mistake, you know. Granted, we're just unplugging, but I'd like to learn a little bit along the ways. So with that, it's Christmas Eve. I'm going to go hang out with the kids, go drink some eggnog. Yeah. Awesome. Well, shout out to everybody that's been watching. I appreciate it, and let's keep on rolling. If I can do it, you can do it. See you guys later.